I was Hany Yajiba Rico from Street Scores, and it is officially done. I'm actually a little surprised that it took this long, but the Washington Commanders have officially cut, released, let go kicker Brandon McManus amid all of the drama that he has going on. Of course, we're going to dive into that drama, why the Commanders went ahead and cut him six days after the drama went public to the rest of the world. And then, of course, from the Commander side of things, we got to dive into who are the best kickers available. I mean, after you cut a kicker, it's not like they just grow on trees. So who are some of the guys that we could possibly look at in other football leagues, maybe from college, a veteran just sitting out there right now, an ex-giant? We're going to take a look at all of these guys. We're going to look at stats and everything like that. But we also got to talk about how Adam Peters is sending a message. We are not dealing with any sort of off-the-field issues right now, and I love it. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. Again, one-stop shop for everything. Commanders, I'm working on film sessions for the rookie class and some of the undrafted free agents i'm keeping y'all updated on every time any of our practices gone public anytime we get any clips i'm gonna show you these clips i'm gonna break down what i've seen from the clips and what i've heard from all of the reporters that attended the practices and if there's any random major news like this i'm gonna keep y'all updated and break those things down as well on top of all of the creative videos that i've been putting out these past couple of weeks as well my rico reports i'm always stacking information to come out with those every now and then as well and without further ado let's go ahead and dive into this video man let's get it adam Adam. All right, so after we found out that Brandon McManus was being sued just a few days ago for sexually assaulting two flight attendants on a Jaguars team flight last year, the commanders have already gone and released them. And this is the shortest public statement I think I've ever seen the Washington commanders put out there. As you can see on your screen right now, I mean, they typically provide some statement like we've looked into the situation. We feel comfortable with making this, coming to this conclusion, making this decision after the research an investigation that we've done on our side of things. No, they just felt like this is all we need to say. We have announced today that we have made the following roster move. The Washington Commanders released the following player, kicker Brandon McManus. That is it. No explanation, no nothing. I guess they feel like it's self-explanatory. Maybe Adam Peters will come out with a comment about it later through an official statement like this that you can actually read or maybe Dan Quinn does but as of right now that's all we have from their end of things and I just thought that was hilarious how short and to the point it was because I guess they felt like it's obvious why we're cutting them we don't even need to talk about it he's gone now we're on to the search for a new kicker and of course this is no surprise at all that's why when I was doing those breakdowns and graphics for our entire roster like I did a 91 man roster breakdown showed you every single single player who's on the team different position groups and things like that then i also did a video a couple of days ago showing like the 2023 roster compared to the 2024 roster and whether we've upgraded or downgraded at different different positions and in those videos when i had brandon mcmanus on the screen i always had question marks because i was not exactly sure if he would actually be here by the time we even got to the regular season i mean I'm not, I wasn't even sure he was going to make it to mandatory mini camps or training camp. So, again, I'm honestly surprised that this didn't happen sooner. I, I honestly kind of expected them to go ahead and cut him the day that we found out this news. And we're going to dive into that soon about this whole situation and how they went about it. And I'm actually pretty proud of the commanders because I felt like they did a pretty good job. We'll get to that soon. But first of all, let's just back it all the way up. What happened? If you didn't already see my video breaking down why he's being sued and why we may potentially cut them before I'm even doing this video that you're watching right now today of why we did cut them. I'm going to go ahead and do like a quick background information on it. I went into a little bit more detail into what happened in the background, why he's being sued and all of that in that video. But just real quick, directly from the athletic themselves, Mark Puglio and Ben Standig wrote this one. They said two women filed the suit in Duval County Circuit Civil Court against McManus and the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're being sued as well for negligence, allowing him to do it. They said players and the team themselves were aware of this and did nothing about it type of thing. They accused McManus 
business of grinding against them while serving the team on an international flight to London. They also alleged the Jaguars failed to supervise McManus and create a safe environment for the staff on the flight per the lawsuit. And remember, McManus just signed a one-year deal for $3.6 million with the Washington Commanders back in March, and the Commanders spokesperson told The Athletic last week the team became aware of the lawsuit as of Monday. And then continuing on with the article, the two women who filed the suit worked as flight attendants on the Jaguars September 28th of 2023 charter flight to London and alleged that McManus passed out $100 bills to encourage three flight attendants, not including Jane Doe 1 or Jane Doe 2, to drink and dance for them. Of course, their names are being kept hidden to, from the public. Jane Doe 1 alleged McManus tried to kiss her while she was seated during turbulence. Jane Doe 1 also alleged McManus grabbed her by the waist from behind and grinded on her on two separate instances while she served meals on the flight according to the lawsuit. Then Jane Doe 2 alleged in the lawsuit that McManus approached her from behind, grabbed her by the waist, grinded while she served the second meal on the flight to London. When the women confronted McManus, he simply smirked and walked away, the lawsuit said. On the team's return flight to Jacksonville, Jane Doe 2 remained in the aircraft second story to avoid McManus per the suit. That's terrible. Jacksonville played back-to-back -back London games in 2023. The team hosted the Atlanta Falcons at Wembley Stadium on October 1st before facing the Buffalo Bills at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on October 8th. And that's just all terrible. Shouts out to Rush Manuel for bringing up this point. Now that it's available, maybe Tressway will start rocking the number three. Great point right there. You know, Tressway gave his five to Jaden Daniels. We still don't exactly know what number he's actually going to end up wearing. So maybe he takes the number three that's, you know, like a decent picker, a, a punter. I said picker, punter number, kicker, punter, whichever one you want to do. And then also, just to let you know, the commanders will hold their third OTA period this upcoming week. Dan Quinn will address the McManus decision, we're assuming, with the media on Wednesday when he finally speaks to the media for the first time in a while. And also, just to remind you, Washington now, with him gone, currently has no kicker on the entire roster, and I'm assuming that they're going to do everything in their power to try to rectify that as soon as possible. And I'm at the very least expecting to see some kicker tryouts at practice, which start back up in a couple of days. Just to let you know the schedule, again, when it came to OTAs, offseason workouts, which is the period that we're in right now, it was May 14th, 15th, and 17th, then the 21st, 22nd, 24th, and then there was this pretty large gap pretty much like a two-week gap and now we're starting back up as of tuesday june 4th and 5th and then again june 7th and then it's mandatory mini camps june 11th through 13th and of course we're gonna have that big gap from then all the way to training camp in july so just to let you know we have practice starting again as of tuesday again dan quinn will address the media as of wednesday hopefully we'll get some some information on what's going on with the kicker position because you cannot sleep on how important the kicker position is. We'll talk about that soon. But shouts out to Chad Ryan for pointing this out. The stock of available kickers right now with NFL experience is surprisingly low right now. So he suspects that the commanders will bring in a couple of college guys for an open competition, or we may tap into some UFL guys, which we'll talk about a little later. Also, shouts out to Mason Kinahan for bringing this up because to my point that I was bringing up earlier, this new front office is not messing around at all. This is a clear message going forward to all of the players on the team that Washington will now replace you if you're bringing any sort of off the field issues. Even if you're a kicker, no matter who you are, you got to go. We're not sweeping anything under the rug. We're trying to run this organization the best way that we possibly can. And it's just... I, I mean, they apparently they gathered whatever information they could, and I'm assuming that whatever information they could gather within those six days led them to this decision. Again, this was only six days later after they found out everything that was going on. To the, to the first day that they even heard about him being sued or even being accused of any of this stuff, six days later, they cut him. And I'm not exactly sure how thorough of an, of an investigation could be done in just those six days. But hey, man, the commanders, I applaud them for sending a very strong message here we are building something great and pure here we do not have time for the off the field issues right now we won four games last year 
And I know we made a lot of changes to the front office, coaching staff, roster, and everything like that, but we still have too many things going on for us to be focused on things as unnecessary as this. I know all of the bad and all of the wrong from the previous regime are now gone. Again, on the field, off the field, a lot of the things. But this team, out of any team in the NFL, cannot afford to have any more drama centering around anything like this going on, especially if you're not a star player that can at least force the commanders to kind of stall a little bit longer to see well let's see if he's innocent or not no the kicker that you just signed a couple of months ago nah you gotta go we're not even about to play around with that and even a step away from being a commanders fan even just as a human being man he gotta go man i feel bad for the women involved and all of that type of stuff so now we got to talk about what do we do at kicker going back to being a commanders fan like what do we do I mean, there are not like a bunch of very reasonable options out there available. Kickers just do not grow on trees. You could argue maybe Randy Bullock is probably the best option we have right now. He's not the best kicker in the world, but he's a decent veteran that could, we could probably bring in in case of emergency. And right now, this is an emergency. It's, it's not looking good for us right now, man. Because people laugh at kickers and completely overlook their impact and how, how important they are to teams and things like that when they're discussing football. But you you will know the value of a kicker when you have a bad one or you don't have one at all like we are right now. Kickers win and lose games for you, dog. And it's really annoying because little freak boy McManus was like automatic within like 30, 40 yards. So now we need to find somebody else that can give us that level of assurance about, okay, it's within this certain yardage. He's 100% from there. We don't even have to worry about that type of thing, which honestly probably isn't even available out there right now. That's why we went and signed him in the first place because he was so automatic from within a certain range so it sucks though we did that before we even knew all this drama was centered around him but we basically need another kicker that we can trust now going back to randy bullock last year with the giants he didn't kick much he only kicked a few i mean he was five for six for them he made two of his 30 to 39 yarders two out of two he made two out of three of his 40 to 49 and he made his only 50 plus yarder which was a 56 yarder and he made all 10 of his extra point attempts which is actually pretty good i mean that's probably the best that we could do right now out there on the market as far as veterans go but even including randy bullock my first option is probably jake bates from the uf L. Just in case if you forgot, Jake Bates was the kicker of the UFL, hitting 60 plus yard game winners in consecutive games. Like he's easily the best kicker that the UFL has to offer right now. Arguably the best kicker they've ever had in their short history of being a league. I mean, he kicked a 64 yard game winner one week, and then the very next week he had a 62 yarder. I remember him going viral for that a minute ago. Like this is the guy that we're probably all fighting for right now. I'm hearing that the Lions are connected to him. I'm definitely worried about that. But just a warning, he will not be available until after June 16th when the UFL postseason finally officially ends. And luckily for us, that is before training camp. So if we did go and get him, he would have plenty of time to get acclimated with the teams. It's not like we're bringing over a quarterback that needs to learn an entire playbook, but it still helps to bring in your new kicker as soon as possible. But again, probably, in my opinion, the very best option that's available out there will not even be available to contact until after June 16th. 16th so that leaves a lot of things up in the air that leaves us in disarray that's going to leave us with like two weeks worth of practices where we don't know who our kicker is so maybe we hold tryouts for now and then we wait out until Jake Bates is ready I don't know we'll see this is a very ugly situation for the commanders right now though it's very ugly I do not I'm not jealous of them right now at all I mean let the pros be the pros this is why they get paid millions of dollars good luck to you Adam Peters and company and also just moving on for those of y'all asking about the kicker that we had last year just to let you know Joey Sly is already with the New England Patriots with Antonio Gibson Jacoby Brissett all of those former commanders are now with the Patriots together so he's not an option let's just go ahead and get out of the way and honestly feel like a lot of the kicks that he missed were due to us having the worst long snapper in NFL history in my opinion that I've at least ever seen in Cameron Cheeseman last year so I feel like Joey Sly got unnecessary hate from this fan base and now that we have a Pro Bowl long snapper in Tyler Ott that could have been a huge help to him but again 
I mean, we're basically talking about nothing right now because he's already with New England. But just to remind y'all, the grass is not always greener. But going back to Jake Bates real quick, as he continues to take the football world by storm in 2024, and this is coming from SportingNews.com, it comes as no surprise that the UFL star and Michigan Panthers kicker Jake Bates has drawn interest from NFL teams, including the Detroit Lions. There are already several teams having him on their radar right now. So there's going to be competition out there for him. Now, granted, we beat out other NFL teams teams for some of the veteran free agents that we signed we beat out other nfl teams for some of the undrafted free agents we signed as well like chiggy anusium the cornerback sam hartman the quarterback a few guys so maybe we could do the same thing here but just to let you know there will be a market out there for ufl kicker jake bates continuing with the article not only has bates made 15 of his 18 field goal attempts this year but he's also nailed a grand total of six 50 plus yarders and three of those have come from 60 or more he's also nailed a 70 yarder in practice recently another shining example of Bates special leg strength his teammate quarterback Danny Etling recently joked that all the offense has to do is get the ball to the 50 yard line and the Panthers are going to score and he really isn't far off while Bates has the eye of NFL teams he actually isn't allowed to even talk to them for now because he's under contract instead he has to wait until the end of the season which comes after the UFL championship championship game on June 16th like I already just told y'all earlier Bates also even recently told Aaron Wilson of click the Houston.com that not being able to speak to teams right now has actually been a good thing because it allows him to focus on the task at hand and I don't blame him at all he said quote I think it's super important to keep the main thing the main thing the main thing is right now being a Michigan Panther luckily NFL teams aren't allowed to talk to me right now. It's a blessing in disguise and not what I need to be worried about at all. Obviously, that's the end goal for everybody. The big goal is to win a championship with the Panthers right now. The team is clicking right now, and I need to do my small job, unquote. And I completely fill him with that. But, hey, man, as soon as he becomes available, we need to be on that. I'm seeing that he's already, again, connected with the Lions, and some other teams have already shown some interest in him out loud, I guess. Maybe there's some tamper in there. Hey, y'all need to chill out. Y'all need to back up off the commander's new kicker. Stop calling our guy. That's our guy already. We already called dibs. Dibs. Just in case if any other, you know, YouTuber for the Lions or anything hasn't said dibs, I called dibs. So when in doubt, we can refer to this legally in a couple of weeks when he's finally available. And I'm just letting you know, man, we may have to outbid other teams like the Lions for him. Like I just said, there's probably going to be a market out there for him. And the commanders have shown that if they really want somebody, they're willing to get competitive with their offers. And we've won a few. We'll see how they treat this kicker situation because this is pretty important. I'm telling y'all, everybody wants to joke about kickers and all of that type of stuff. When you don't have one or when you have one, but he sucks, it really shows. And I mean, to be very honest with y'all, those are really the only two kickers that I can really say that I'm comfortable with a signing as of right now that I can find out there. Jake Bates in the UFL and Randy Bullock, who was just with the Giants last year and a few, I mean, he's kind of been hopping from team to team the last few years anyway. Like, he was just with the Titans, in 2022 and 2021 going backwards then he was with the Bengals for a few years all the way from 2016 to 2020 he was with the Steelers before that then the Giants before that then the Jets before that and then the Houston Texans for two years before that so he's hopped around a little bit he I mean and there has to be a, I mean if you have a great kicker you typically don't let them go so that does kind of look a little bad on his resume that is like some sort of a red flag why are teams willing to just let you go after a couple of years for the most part or just even after one year after they have you so i mean that's arguably the probably the best we could do out right there right now but sadly and now maybe there's some random up and coming kicker that just goes out there in these kicker tryouts and just balls out and then maybe we just found a gym i mean i'm hoping like that's really what we have to pray for right now and maybe we can get kid from kid and play from that class act movie that just suddenly found out he's a genius at kicking who knows what our options are right now chris cooley brought up a good point he tweeted on twitter as you can see on the screen right now i honestly hope they sign a kicker from the ufl here are some options and, and i can see the argument for that because you're going with the higher ceiling rather than just like a random veteran kicker that's just sitting around on the couch waiting for an nfl team to call them maybe you try to get one of these up and comers maybe you try to bet on ceiling and traits and maybe elite potential as far as the ufl goes right now and these guys are as fresh as it gets they're currently kicking in actual games right now for their respective league it may not be the nfl but you're a kicker just go out there and kick and make the same length field goal not like the field goal is further 
further away, you make a 60 yarder in the UFL, you can make a 60 yarder in the NFL, which is absolutely insane. But going back to the tweet, Matt Coughlin is 10 of 10 on 20 to 49 yards and four or five from 50 plus. That's a decent option right there. You have Andre Smith. I hope that's how you pronounce that. 13 of 14 of 20 to 49 yards and 4 or 5 from 50 plus. Jake Bates, my favorite option. 9 of 10 from 20 to 49 and 6 of 9 from 50 plus with a few 60 yarders. And then Matt McCrane is 10 of 12 from 20 to 49 and 5 of 6 from 50 plus. But I want to know their PAT numbers. I'm not going to lie because that was the main selling point on Brandon McManus. He doesn't miss PAT. So when you score touchdowns, you can pretty much just go ahead and add that, that number six seven to it rather than just six you might as well just go ahead and add seven to your previous score because you already know he's going to make it he didn't miss a single one last season and i'm hoping whoever we bring in being able to make 50 plus yarders are great but at the end of the day your offense should be able to handle most of that we need you to make pats first and foremost and then we go backwards from there because sadly for guys like joey sly who have big legs or, or even jake bates who also has a big leg from his ability to make 60 plus yarders those guys are kind of getting schemed out a little bit out of the NFL they get in phased out by the new rules the new kickoff rules because having a big leg right now at first it used to be beneficial in two different ways you can make longer field goals obviously but also we really needed that in kickoffs to kick it out of the back of the end zone so teams don't even have a chance to return it it's just touchbacks every time that your defense is going out there on the field but now with the new kickoff rules a guy with a leg that big it doesn't really matter as much like it used to so it sucks for guys like Joey Sly and Jake Bates when you have the big leg that, I mean, now that type of thing isn't as valuable as it used to be up until this, literally just this season for the first time in NFL history. We'll see how this goes. Now, my main point is, is that we need a guy that's more dependable and consistent than the guy with the bigger leg. Usually there was kind of like a 50-50. I mean, do you want the bigger leg? Do you want the more consistent guy? Now it's obvious, especially with the new kickoff rules, that you want the more consistent guy. So I'm hoping whenever we Hold these tryouts we don't have a 50 plus yard kicking competition that could be a part of it but i want to see who can make 30 pats in a row under pressure situations loud noise all of that type of stuff that's how i would personally decide my kicker right now because ultimately you hope your offense is good enough to where you don't need to be making 50 plus yarders out here hopefully you can make anything within 40 pats are automatic and we're good to go i'm solid with that any year prior before the new kickoff rules, maybe I would have been, like I said, in the middle where the big leg guy can see the argument, the, the more consistent guy can see the argument. But now, just give me the more consistent guy any day of the week. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if you feel about everything discussed in the video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. Do not leave this video without leaving a like. Of course, let me know in the comment section if you agree or disagree with any of my points. Do you agree or disagree with the commanders cutting them six days after they found out that he was being sued for everything that's going on? Also, let me know how you feel about the kicker situation situation is this like panic hit the red button who are your favorite kicker options out there between the ufl veteran maybe a random college come up that didn't end up getting signed by an nfl team let me know who your options out there if there are any that i missed let me know put me on in the comment section because please give me some hope that we can find a really good kicker before we get to this regular season please so let me know how you feel about all of that and of course stay tuned for all of the content keep y'all updated on everything commanders working on film sessions for the rookies anytime that we have practice this and the practice is open to the media for us to actually know and see what's going on in practice of course i'm gonna do breakdowns and give y'all the clips as those come out so stay tuned for all of that i really appreciate y'all i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out